Hey, joining me now, our friend Stephen Yates, foreign policy expert. I have a million things to, so sorry, Stephen, I have a million things to ask you today. You can find him on Twitter at Yates Comms, uh, and I need to make sure that I that I put that out there also, uh, at Yates Comms, foreign policy expert. He worked with the uh, Bush administration also and uh, advises all over on this on these issues. I, I have to get your reaction to this because the, my first thought, Stephen, when I was playing this, when I first saw this clip and I was going through uh, some of the previous sound bites from her this afternoon on this issue, is that, I mean, is there a just a basic Biden original policy or is everything kind of an Obama retread? Because now we're back at 2008 talking about closing Guantanamo Bay again. And are we really at the point now where... I mean, what is what is the what is the purpose of closing this? I mean, what what do they what 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 did satisfaction or what goal do they achieve from from doing this? Well, I think there is an element of everything to sort of hit pause in 2016 while they had a collective freak out for four years. And so they're just sort of picking up on unfinished business. They never quite ever explain why it was they couldn't do this in the eight years of the Obama Biden administration. And maybe that would give some clue as to why when you're left with whatever residuals there are there, you're probably dealing with the hardest and most undeserving cases at this point. And they never ever say, well, why do we need a Gitmo? And it's not just because of Jack Nicholson's famous movie line, but there does need to be a place where you take the worst of the worst of humanity. They're, they don't have traffic violations. They weren't caught up for not paying their taxes. These are people who actively engaged in mass murder of Americans and our allies. And you're not engaged in some, some kind of tiddlywinks game of, will you please confess? And how about we just go ahead and let you off on the streets with a slap on the wrist because there's grave consequences. Mm -hmm. We thought they learned some of that in the Biden administration uh, or in the Obama administration when they thought that radicalism was over and all of a sudden Libya went the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Syria went the wrong way. Uh, and we may see things in Afghanistan and Iraq go profoundly the wrong way uh, because of the approaches that are being taken now. There's risks out there. Uh, but uh, to me, this is just so low on the order of magnitude of priorities in terms of threats to America. And I think it's just ideological on their point. Somewhere along the way, some chirping birds in Guantanamo bad and their reaction is, OK, well, let's close it without ever contemplating. Is there really a need? for something that's being done there. And why should we give it up if there is that need? Because I don't know who has the confidence, well, where and how are we gonna take care of them in the American uh, yeah. prison system? I don't, I don't think that we are ready to swallow that one. That was, and that was actually, that was gonna be my next question. Where, when they talk about transferring them, transferring them to where? I, I remember in the, I think this was maybe in Obama's first term, there was discussion about transferring some of these more higher profile detainees in Gitmo to there was a prison in Illinois, a federal uh, prison in right. Illinois. They were talking about transferring right. them to everybody in Illinois started freaking out all these rural Illinois folks. And I understand it. We're not looking at that again now, are we? I hope not. I, with these transfers they're talking about usually are transfers back to the Gulf region. Uh, and so off they go to the broader Middle East, mm. where I'm sure they'll never disappear again into doing things of ill repute. Uh, and so, of course, Americans don't want them in their backyard. That gets back to that old Jack Nicholson line. You want me on that wall. You need this facility. And people might not like it, might not want to admit it. Maybe there's been abuses of the system. But my goodness, most of the people that are down there, these are people that did worse than abuse. Yeah. I mean, the fact that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed lived at all kind of rubs me the wrong way. Uh, and so the fact that he's been in a super luxury max facility for all of these years, uh, given every kind of religious freedom that he denied to the people he was attacking, murdering, decapitating, whatever else he was involved in. Uh, I'm sorry, I just don't have a lot of sympathy for trying to wrap this one up. Uh, and uh, so it may not be a popular thing to say. I know that everyone wants to kind of put all that stuff behind us. But unfortunately, I think that there's a level of evil out there in this world that our criminal justice system can't handle. Mm. Our media certainly can't handle it or tell the truth about it. And I don't think we can afford to just unleash it back on the world. I think the people out there planning to do things need to at least be afraid that they're going to end up in a place like this. No, I think that's a really good point. Talking to Stephen Yates at Yates Combs, you said something that I thought was very intriguing, that maybe it's you know politically incorrect or maybe it's not politically acceptable to even say this anymore. 
Whereas I just remember after 9-11, there was that sentiment that, yes, like throw these people in the darkest pits of hell and throw away the key uh, if we don't just, you know, execute them on site. Uh, and that w- then we seemed, I guess, as as the story, uh, as everything started, all the stories of the atrocities that have been committed by people who were, have been detained in Gitmo and, and people who, who carried this out against women and children overseas and, and our own soldiers – after the stories got their play in the press and they kind of faded away, it seems like they were they sort of also faded from people's memories. And people don't realize the horrible atrocities that were committed by these individuals in Gitmo. But that 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 passage of time doesn't lessen their crimes. And so and it shouldn't soften their treatment either. It shouldn't. Uh, and look, I have some I have some sympathy for the fact that there may be some people that uh, get caught up as as collateral damage in this. I don't want that to happen. But all 3,000 plus people killed on 9-11 were, were not intending to pass away that day. They were guilty of no crime. They had committed no offense. Uh, and so if we have an imperfect system down there, fix the system. Uh, but the problem isn't that these people are innocent. Uh, and uh, so uh, I know that you can make movies and TV shows and get lots of Twitter followers if you say otherwise. But I'm, I'm sorry, there needs to be a place to put people that are actually too dangerous for the regular law and order system. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And it's sad that it's sad that it, it, that even has to be phrased in a careful way. I mean, it, evil should be you should be able to call evil evil. And, and, and that's it. Uh, speaking of evil, switching gears here. The latest, uh, the, the Microsoft Exchange, I was looking at this, this AP story where the Biden administration finally you know, had said something about this. Uh, the Microsoft Exchange hack, they formally blamed them, blamed China for this massive hack of the, of the email software, of the email server software, accused Beijing of not just working with hackers, but even recruiting them. But they, again, the statement that had no, no sanctions, nothing and then, of course, we get the story from Norway, where back in March, their parliament, their email system had been also hacked. Again, they tra- they announced today it was traced back to China. So are, where are we in the point of, of, of acknowledging that the current path of or the current uh, uh, a tool of deterrence, whatever that may be, isn't working? I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that, you know, the, the option is war or nothing, but surely we have some other arrows in our quiver here, Stephen. Yeah, and we certainly haven't invested in the right priorities, for sure. I mean, if you look at the date range of when these alleged offenses took place, a lot of them are like 2011 to 2018. We're dealing in the information age. It's three freaking years later. How is it that we're just now hearing about an electronic crime on mass scale? Uh, And so, I mean, if you're going to have these things have any impact at all, you got to have sanctions or penalties that come into place almost instantaneously. Uh, and But if you're going to go through three years and the best you come up with is an angry letter that goes back in someone else's direction, I don't think the hackers are deterred. And by this time, whatever mode the Chinese hackers or the sponsors in the PLA are using, they've moved on to the next best thing. I mean, at best, we're, we're just we're like running a marathon, but we're on mile five and they're on mile 25. Yeah, and and that's that's a great point. Talking to Stephen Yates here uh, at Yates Comms, and and the because this I think it just the the well, obviously the lack of of any kind of response just simply encourages them. But not even not even rolling out a sanction. I mean, what what is it going to take to get Democrats on board with that? And it seems I guess it's a I, I guess it's unpopular with the Democrat Party to have that kind of response. I just remember Joe Biden saying, oh, China's not going to do anything, man. What was his quote? Something to the effect of, oh, yeah, they're not a big threat, man. They're not going to do any. Now here we are. All that, you know, these years later, here we are. Yeah, it's a shame he didn't say that on camera and someone could remind him of the statement. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely the case that these guys, that the Chinese, the Russians, the Iranians, and some other bad actors have been at this for a very, very long time. Uh, for most of my career, Democrats were quite happy to recommend sanctions against China. Uh, when I was coming of age in policy in the 1990s, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer were some of the leading advocates mm. for sanctions uh, opposed upon China for a variety of different things, from human rights to financial crimes. I, I think it's basically the sort of orange years of the last four that have made it so that you can't think about a, a sanction because... Uh, Just like free traders used to have an almost theological belief in the power of markets, and I'm I'm prone to that belief. I've just been sobered by reality. (laughs) Uh, When there's 
the what the other side had used to love the sanction right until trump came along and then it became the poison pill right so i think we just have to kind of grow up and realize it turns out there's bigger threats to America than this weird stuff about climate change and race theories and stuff like that. There's real bad people out there that yeah. are ready to shut down our infrastructure, ready to attack, ready to kill people. Maybe we should take on those threats. That, yeah, that seems like that's a good idea instead of worrying about pronouns and wokery. Last last uh, question for you here, Stephen. I'm, I'm sure you saw the story, too, where Chinese officials were had reposted this threat to nuke Japan if even one troop is sent to Taiwan because this standoff, this the tensions over Taiwan continue to increase. Is this is this a, 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 an increasement in in their uh, aggression or is this just kind of ma- maintenance? They reposted it, so they've said it before, but still, I'm curious as to your thoughts. No, I don't really know of any kind of a statement where the Chinese government has actually publicly committed to first use of nuclear weapons. Uh, Supposedly, they're very, very principled and only defense oriented, very, very peace loving people. Uh, And so they would only use these kinds of things if attacked first and they want to have that deterrent. That's what they've said over and over and over for years and years and years. So, of course, they wouldn't contribute to proliferation and things like this. This is actually an exceedingly provocative statement. It is a declaration of first use of nuclear weapons. Now, part of me says, good for you. You're saying the quiet part out loud. We at least know. (laughs) I love your optimism. (laughs) But but it's, it's actually a very, very provocative thing under normal times. The very champagne sipping and uh, cocktail clinking people in New York would have an emergency meeting Mm -hmm. of the U.N. Security Council and there would be talk of sanctions because this violates every counter proliferation rule or norm uh, that China supposedly signed on to for years and years. Uh, But really what it is is political warfare. Japan has made increasingly clear that they, turns out, can see with their own eyes and witness with their own human interaction that the people of Taiwan are peaceful. They have a free economy. They're a great trade partner. And so the Japanese people just aren't buying the Chinese load about, hey, you have to isolate and punish these people. And so Mm -hmm. I think everyone in Asia knows who's changing the status quo. It's the Chinese Communist Party. Unfortunately, the Japanese people right now are suffering because of the COVID games. Uh, And so the Olympic Games coming out and they're getting ripped off going through that process. So the Chinese attack just continues. It does. It does. It just continues. Well, we'll be watching that and seeing what else. I mean, they they actually were apparently like putting out photos. Just this crazy, the stuff that they're able to do and they think that they can freely do. Stephen Yates, I love your optimism. Said with a straight face and just a little, (laughs) I love it. I love the attitude. Always good to see you, my friend. Have a great week. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Dana. Take care. Of course. You too. (laughs) 